Hi Startup Vision, I'm Elsa Yugman, the founder of LC Beauty. We are a clean beauty tech company born in San Francisco, California, and our vision is to build the future of product for sensitive skin to help everyone who has a reactive skin. Like sensitive and reactive skin in consumer, and it's more than half of the US population. And today we apply more than 100 unique ingredients per day on our skin. Our vision is to do never more than 10 products, mm -hmm. 10 ingredients. Hello Elsa, uh, welcome to Startup Vision. You know, in this um, interview, we always talk about why you did uh, your startup, why you created uh, this company, and what was your dream at the start. And in fact, we can say that the dream is now for you because you just won the uh, French American Entrepreneurship Award. And, uh, and this dream came, in fact, for you from a, a nightmare you went through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was 18, uh, during my last year of high school, I had what we call a toxic shock syndrome. It's a bacterial infection. And what happened to me is that I had very intensive treatments. Uh, it made my skin very sensitive. I lose a lot of uh, skin layers during the treatment and caught over like uh, dermatological disease that year. And it, it really transforms the way I was seeing my skin. I never used any skincare product before, only makeup, and I had to change completely my, my routine. And, and is it why you did what you did, a PhD in uh, pharmacology, in skin pharmacology? Yeah, you know, it's funny because it's something I never realized until recently that that was probably the root of everything. I had always had a passion about uh, skin because it's both an organ, uh, deep science, medicine, but also it's uh, creativity, cosmetics, and that's what always interested me in going to skin. And uh, you are a woman launching a beauty tech company in San Francisco. So yeah. this could have been three big barriers. And in fact, you transform them in three big competitive advantage. Yeah, it's still very difficult difficult, and it's still like a daily fight, but uh, being a solo female founder in San Francisco is not easy. It was not my choice to start solo, but um, I had to start and I mean, I'm like, what should I do? Should I just start or wait to find the right team? And I thought, no, let's, let's just get there. And I've learned so much. And uh, beauty tech thankfully kind of changed in the vision of investor because they realize, they realize there is a big market. Uh, especially with more and more female founders trying to do like better skincare product, better beauty product, more adapted to women, uh, is a big trend now, and, and this is great. And uh, and yeah, I'm in a very competitive market, and this is still uh, my my issue. I think building LC because it's hard to convince investors that we first have I think a great product and a great vision with a, a real expertise in the domain. But yes, branding still needs to be uh, better along the way. And I think it's more like a detail rather than having a good product, but it's not always easy to explain. And uh, being by yourself like that, as you said, you know, not having a co-founder, having to fight everything, don't you feel sometimes it's very lonely or very difficult? How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's hard, but the truth is that I may appear alone, but uh, I, I always had a team with me, even at the very, very early stage when I had absolutely no money. Friends like Uma uh, helped me to build the branding at the beginning. Uh, my best friend Elisa helped me with like uh, all the business part and then Theodora John earlier this year. And uh, I mean, without her, it would be very difficult to continue. There are very important concepts inside the brand LC, you know, the microbiome mm -hmm. and the clean beauty yes. concept. Can you explain? Yeah, sure. So microbiome today, uh, if you haven't heard about it, it's all these good bacteria and microorganisms that you have on your skin, just like in your gut. And uh, probably you've maybe heard about probiotic. Probiotic mm -hmm. means actually like a, a good bacteria for you. And what's happening is that we realize that we have all these microorganisms on our skin that are really key uh, to be healthy. And unfortunately today with uh, the skincare product we use and the environment, it's actually destroying these uh, layers, which leads to more uh, skin conditions. And clean beauty is huge today. Uh, it's, it's about like really the change that consumers are actually driving to make products they can really trust. Uh, that are better for you and also better for the environment. So it's about uh, finding ingredients that are like consumer friendly and also health friendly at the same time. And with the concept of citizen science, 
he, at a point, you know, at a moment where everybody says that it's uh, terrible to give your data and mm -hmm. everything, you, you're trying to demonstrate that um, giving data is good uh, for uh, the society. Yeah, because we are really targeting a pain point which is like sensitive and reactive skin in consumer and it's more than half of the US population and we thought at the beginning if we just do skincare and, and send it away without knowing how people feel about it or what's the impact on their skin, we would lose a lot of insight to develop the best product. So we are very transparent about that, that we have this project that we want to do. And it's very important to do it in the everyday life of a consumer rather than doing only in like a clinical labs that are very close and very disconnected from everything you can do in uh, every day. So it's, it's on the base of volunteering. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, and not all the consumer will, will be participating into that. It may, it may be just a small pool of our consumer that we could offer them to do like, for example, a microbiome analysis of their skin if they want to, but it's uh, it's completely optional. That you don't have to give your data to get the product, not at all. And now we are going to talk about your product. They are very minimalistic, and that's yes. what makes them clean, almost clinical products, clean. <laughs> as you say. Yeah. So you know, it's funny because I was reading a lot about sensitive skin, and dermatologists say you need to decrease the number of ingredients you put on your skin every day because this can lead to more reactivity of the skin. And today we apply more than 100 unique ingredients per day on our skin. That's a survey that showed that. Uh, and that's why I thought if I, I, I had no money, I was bootstrapping and I'm like, the first thing I can do before doing more science is at least to try to completely reduce the number of ingredients in the product. I think it's better for our skin, but it's also better for the environment. So how many kind of components do you, do you put in the product? Uh, so uh, our vision is to do never more than 10 products, mm -hmm. 10 ingredients, and we also include ingredients that are not always shown. So for example, we don't do any trade secret ingredient where you cannot disclose. A lot of our consumers may have skin allergies and we want them to make sure the product is right for them. They might be allergic to some of our ingredients. So I think it's important to be radically transparent and to make it easy to the consumer to see the, the ingredient in the product. And I also heard that you're not putting water. Yes. That's very interesting. Yes, the first step, uh, uh, because we could put water, but we would have to be sterile and this is a more expensive process. So we thought at first, uh, let's remove the water from the product because if you don't have water, by definition, bacteria should not grow in the product if you have a, a packaging where you don't put your finger in them. Uh, so this is the angle we, we took to remove a preservative or antibacterial. So ingredient. most of the time, the bacteria come from water. It's, it's what I've, uh, I mean, bacteria are everywhere, mm -hmm. and, uh, you, but they, they are not always uh, pathogenic, but uh, they can grow and, and become like a real problem if you have a certain amount of water in the product. And so what's next now for LC, for the brand? <laughs> yeah, so now we are, we are in the middle of uh, the fundraising, so we are raising money to develop the, uh, the citizen science project and all the research and development of the product. And we hope to launch uh, more products soon with the first step of the personalization system. Thank you very much, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you.